on everybody? It's your boy Lolo coming back at y'all with yet another video. The purpose of this video is to talk about what I believe are the top five things that are essential to progressing as an entry level software engineer. I myself am an entry level software engineer. I've been in my role for about four months now and I am honestly very confident in the stuff that I'm about to tell you. I've talked about these consistently in other videos, but I just really think to make it a great point, really take emphasis on the topics I'm gonna to talk about today. Everything that I'm gonna talk about today is things that I've learned during my transition from medicine to tech. If you don't know me, then you wouldn't know that I originally was studying medicine in PA school, physician assistant school, and then I decided to change my career into software engineering. And my means of doing that was through a coding bootcamp. Now, understand that everything I'm gonna be saying is stuff that I've learned from my time during coding bootcamp, but I genuinely believe that these topics can be applied any field, honestly, outside of tech, but most especially within software engineering. So to get straight to the point, these five things are gonna be first, your community. Second, having projects. Third, structure. Fourth, time. And last but not least, actual skills. Let's get into it. The first thing is community. Community. What I'm talking about specifically is going on to a website like LinkedIn and building your own professional network, you know, building a professional portfolio where people can get to know you, can get to see what you're doing, what you're being updated with by making posts throughout the week and throughout the day because it's really important for the software engineering community, uh, for the tech community, and for any community that you're trying to dive yourself into. For them to understand that you are completely invested, to understand that this is something that you're very adamant about, that this is a change, either if you're turning to a career in tech or even if you already are in a career in tech, it's really good to network and sell yourself to you know potential employers, to potential coworkers, and just to anybody who you know may or not be willing to have a helping hand. For myself, when I also talk about community, during my coding bootcamp, it was really important to make friends within my cohort because this allowed me to have people on the side to study with, have people on the side to work on projects with, and have people on the side to support me through my own endeavors, you know, through the ups and downs of the job process. And this is really important because getting a job in tech, it's not something that's, you know, very, very easy. So having a support group, you know, whether or not you have that as your family, your friends, or even your coworkers is just something that's always gonna help you in the future. I know for a fact that if something were to ever happen with one of my really close cohort mates in my program, then I would definitely see what I can do to get them through the interviews and get them to whatever access and whatever help they need. And it's only because of the experiences that we felt together through the boot camp that I'm easily able to do that. So that's why I would definitely say it's important to make communities and make friends, you know, within the spaces that you that you go through. I think that uh, one of the really important parts about having shared experiences is that you can also create friendships through those shared experiences. And if you are trying to learn to code on your own, I definitely would recommend, you know, going in the comments of this video specifically and you know reaching out to other people i know that i've actually been asked a couple times uh, whether or not uh, i want to build a discord for this community and that is something that i definitely would be very very happy to do at the moment right now i think that we're a little bit too small to get it started but it's definitely something that i will keep you guys noted for the future because i think it would just be really important for people to have access to other people who are willing to help them learn to code uh, help them make that transition or even help them get that first job so to clarify I really think it's important to build a community through LinkedIn, having your professional network and posting on a consistent basis so that people know what you're doing. If you are trying to learn to code on your own and you can't find those communities, there's thousands of free communities on Discord, uh, on YouTube, and even on LinkedIn, as well as even Twitter, where people offer help and offer support uh, in any way that they can for free. Now, the second thing I'm gonna talk about is gonna be projects. So this one is going to definitely be specifically more towards software engineering and towards computer science. For me personally, one of the things that really helped me get my first job was having projects. So if you're coming from a coding bootcamp, then I would definitely say that you're gonna need to have projects because you're typically not gonna have experience in another technical role. And because of that, recruiters and hiring managers really like to see you know what your technical standpoint is like where exactly you are and what can you do you know like everyone can put whatever they want to put on their resume but at the end of the day can you prove to me that you can actually code which obviously would take place in a technical interview but even before then getting yourself through that first door to get the interview you're probably going to need to have some project and i recommend having a certain amount of projects 
especially some passion projects that you can dive into and really talk about in front of the hiring managers to, to show them how much you really enjoyed working on something and to show them that you can actually technically talk about it so that you can talk about the code that's going on, that you can talk about the UI that you implemented, that you can talk about the different technologies that you're working with, the ups and downs of creating this project. That is the type of stuff that hiring managers and recruiters really love to see because it's the stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in the workforce. To communicate the code that you worked on with other people in your company, with the senior engineers, project managers, and you have to be able to do it from a technical aspect and then also from a different aspect you know if it's something you really enjoy then you should be able to talk about it since i was able to work on numerous projects i was able to bring different projects to different interviews but not only that i was also able to show my progression through projects which i think is another important thing i would definitely recommend you know trying to show your progression and trying to sell that that you know this is something that you've definitely uh did like for myself i was able to show you know my very first uh, html website where it was just a little bit of javascript implemented uh, and at the very end i you know showed them my front end and back end work project which i think helped me get the job that i have today the third one structure personally i am a person who needs structure and specifically with the coding boot camp i find it very important to know what you're going to do throughout the day this third one will also tie in a little bit with the fourth one which is time and that's simply because you want to be a person who can create structure within your own day and within the work that you do for me as you guys have seen in some of my day in the life videos i have my morning stand up uh, sometimes i have meetings with my other engineers we have our specified days to work on bugs and things like that provide structure so that during the, uh, the rest of the time i can work on my own ticket this is something that i really wanted to find when i was searching for boot camps i wanted to find a place that was going to offer me structure you can also do this for yourself you know i previously said in other videos about how the differences between boot camps computer science degrees and also learning to code about on yourself but personally i think that having structure is something that's going to allow you to progress by learning new technologies every single day implementing those new technologies you know adding them to your projects and being able to talk about them when you need to talk about them i really personally think that structure allows every single person the ability to learn something as a software engineer you really have to understand that our job is to be lifelong learners we have to be ready to implement new technologies to work on new technologies all the time and because of that structure and finding structure in the way that you learn and the way that you can implement new code is something that can truly only benefit you now the fourth thing is going to be time and time really does play a lot into the structure part um, but it's a different point and really only because i mean time management you can be structured and you can learn things if you have poor time management you're going to procrastinate and you're going to get things done late and that's not what we want, right? We want to be very successful. We want to be on time. We want to be doing the best and proper things for ourselves, especially if you're pacing yourself on your own. If we want to spend our time in an accurate way, then we want to manage our time very, very correctly. And the best way to do this is to honestly track. This is one example, which doesn't really apply to everything, but you can take it to apply to others. When I was starting to learn data structures and algorithms and I was running through beat code questions, what I would do is I would set a timer for 25 minutes. And at the end of that question, if I couldn't find the solution within 25 minutes, I would just figure out the answer. I didn't want to spend time wasting and adding another five minutes to the clock because I knew it was just pointless. There's so many questions on Leeco, and at the end of the day, if you keep on adding five minutes, five minutes here and there, add up to a lot more time that you would rather have spending figuring out the specific solution and then going over it later. And because of that, you can actually implement that sort of idea and that sort of time management uh, practice into other areas of your uh, other areas of work. Studying, studying dashboards and algorithms, whether it comes to learning and implementing something new. If I wanted to learn 3.js and implement that, I could potentially say, hey, I want to study 3.js, study the documentation for about two hours, and then try to actually implement something another two hours here. And then after that, you know, if I couldn't figure it out, I'll just spend more time back on the documentation, but it keeps you away from wasting time. Another trick that you can use is the Promodoro tactic. And that's something that I use all throughout undergrad when I was studying health. It was very useful studying anatomy and physiology back when that was the most stressful thing that I had to worry about. Is I would study for 30 minutes, take a five minute break, watch some anime, study for 30 minutes, take a five minute break. So many Promodoro timers, you could honestly even practice coding and one of your project could be creating a Promodoro timer could use to help yourself study and help yourself get better 
at writing more code. And lastly, the fifth thing I'm gonna be talking about today is getting your actual skills correct. Now for this fifth thing, when I talk about skills, there's a lot of ways that you can improve your skills, but specifically I'm gonna give you guys another four things that can help you A, B, C, D, all right? And it's just gonna be real quick. So this first thing is going to be to read good code. When you read good code, you become better at writing code. And whether or not you're actually a junior engineer and you're at a position uh, and at a company where you can do code reviews, uh, obviously I recommend reading the code and seeing what's going on, asking your senior developers what's going on with this code, like why did you implement it this way. Try to reread your old code. It's important to try to look at the things that you wrote before and see different ways to implement them if you can. And if you're not in a position where you can read code like that, then I would definitely recommend reading open source code on GitHub. People post whatever they're working on on GitHub on Twitter all the time, and there's also open source code everywhere. So I definitely recommend trying to get the opportunity to read good code. That way you can know how good code is written. And if you read good code, hopefully you can write good code. Second thing that I'm gonna talk about, keep updated with the things that are going on in whatever space you're in. So let's say you work as a JavaScript engineer, like you work primarily in JavaScript, uh, or in React and something like that, then try to keep updated with the things that are going on in the React world. All of the changes and implementations that are taking place on a day-to-day -day basis, things that are happening on Twitter that React is implementing uh, into their newest updates and things like that. That way you can always be on top of it. You can always know what's going on and you can always know the best ways to implement things that are going on at your company or even on your own side project. Third thing or C or whatever, pair program. If you're in a community, try to create opportunities where you can work with another developer. We can see how their brain works. It offers you a really interesting dynamic because you get to see the other person's workflow, but then you also get to understand the dynamic of working with someone else. And this is really, really important because when you're in an actual working environment, there's gonna be so many opportunities and so many chances of where you are going to have to work with someone else because you can figure something else on your own or they need your own expertise because you've listened to every single thing on this list to become the best developer that you are. With that being said, the last and final thing is to please make sure that you take a break. Because if you're watching this and you've made it this far, you're clearly working hard to become Become the best developer that you can you clearly want the job and you're trying to do the things you need to do to get to that job take everything i say with the understanding that this is my own advice this is things that have worked for me and really try to implement them if you can and remember to cut yourself a break remember to relax every now and then you don't want to be coding away enjoy the process enjoy everything because one day you're going to look back and say wow i really that's in, that's incredible i made it as a software engineer uh, and i know that will happen to you because it happened to me lastly Thank you guys for all the support. I really appreciate how everyone on the channel has been, you know, super hype with the community that we built over here. I got a lot in store for you guys, especially with these next few videos. We're actually about to be heading out to Denver. So I had to show you guys some lifestyle, some travel, software engineering videos over there. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, everything, all that in between. Appreciate it and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.